Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our course of C310 on charts, Ministry Administration. That's a uh, moment to play. Get started. You want me to get it? Let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come here under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we're about to have. Where we learn how to administer uh, the church and the ministry, the calling that you have placed on our life, how to um, build ourselves so that we can treat people right, so that we can. Um, do it just in an order, like uh, because you're a God of an order, Jesus. God, I just pray that as we are learning this, you help us to understand and apply it uh, in our life, in our ministry, so that we can be a blessing to nations and nations. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay, nice to see you both and <laughs> see you all <laughs> after two weeks. I've uh, been away, uh, just uh, traveling in history. Uh, so the first week was in Jamshit Kuru, Jarkin State, so I'm ministry there, and then last week, ministry. So good to be back. Um, we are almost coming to the end of our course. I'll just quickly review uh, some of the things we talked about in project management uh, and just to guide us in thinking in, in, uh, in terms of managing projects because even in the ministry uh, when we are doing different areas of ministry or sometimes we may actually take up projects so we need to know how to manage these projects how to you know what what goes into making sure that ministry or that project runs well. So we need to understand that, and we need to do that. So I'll just quickly review uh, some of the things we already shared uh, on that uh, pre-recorded lecture, and then we will go forward from that. So I'm just sharing the PDF, um, lesson number 13. Um, so it's important for us to plan and do things well. Now, I, I did say that, you know, when you look at from a biblical perspective, there are people who may not like to plan. They say, no, no, just as it comes, we'll do. God will do us I mean, it's it's nice to have that attitude, but the Bible also teaches us to plan. Just so look at the ant during summer. It's gathering its food for the winter. So this is planned, even the little ant is planning, you know, God has designed it that way to prepare for the future. So we have to have a proper balance. You plan for the future, but you're, you're still trusting God. You're not uh, you're not saying that I am fully in control. We are doing our part, but we're depending on God to help us fulfill those objectives. So Typically, and these are just general general knowledge is applied in all kinds of industries and so on. When you plan, so there's this initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and close. So these are the things that are involved when you're executing a project. Also, we can think of projects as specific ministries that we do, or certain things that you're trying to a project within that ministry. Uh, we think of it. So uh, we, we talked about these different stages when you're initiating and have a good plan. You have an idea of when you want to get it done, how much money you can spend, what people are available. You would generally appoint somebody to lead it, lead the project, lead that ministry area, give them their the, we empower them because you need to select the right people. Then you need to also have a team, project team, bring together the right people to do the work. Then you would plan for the project, which should try to have a schedule. You'll say, okay, this is going to go on for six months, or maybe two years, five years, then another plan. Then you try to work out the cost. What goes into the cost? So typically, cost will be salaries of people. Uh, cost will be either buildings we have to rent, or things that we have to buy. Out. 
in order to do this work. So you put down all the costs and uh, the activities. What are the things you're going to do? Who's going to do it? What could be the risks? Now, the way we use this project uh, in, in our in, in at APC is every conference or uh, church gap be treated like a project. Yeah, so whoever is responsible for that, right? we tell them, okay, you send us, uh, uh, our, you know, first of all, we put it into our calendar. Uh, uh, this year, we, we've already made up a calendar for 2024. So for 2024, we know, okay, this conference is going to happen now, men's conference, when women's conference, and we put the dates. And we know that, okay, it's a one-day conference, or in some days it's a three-day conference. We know ahead of time. Then whoever is responsible, we tell them, okay, you start planning for it. That means work out a budget for that. Yeah, so you put them, okay, to rent the hall, it will be so much. You know, you have, if you're providing uh, lunch and tea, so much food, uh, promotions, all those things. And if there are outstation participants, uh, so it's like a little project. But then they have to do the schedule, they have to do the estimation, the cost, and then they send it to us uh, so somebody can review it. Uh, then we approve it. Then they start actually doing it. And then at the end of it, we do a comparison, meaning. When we were planning, we said it'll cost so much. After we actually did, what was the actual cost? And also, what can we learn from it? So sometimes they become under budget. That means they may, be, they may not have spent as much as they thought. Sometimes it goes over budget, some unexpected things happen. Then we have to ask the question, you know, why did we spend more? Where did you spend more? Was it right? Sometimes, yeah, it is valid. Something he had not thought of comes up, and so we spend more. But how much more? We can't go to so, so uh, that's the advantage. We can actually look at it, we can learn lessons for the future. So we plan, we do all of this. Uh, then there's execution. That means you know you're actually doing the work. Now, sometimes when you're doing the work, there could be some problems. Maybe the hall you booked suddenly is not available. Something, you know, some problems can happen while you're actually doing the work. But the people you thought would be there to help are not available. Uh, vendors may change, so many things. Or sometimes it's people conflict, people are not getting along while you're working towards the project. So many things will happen uh, while these yeah, well, executions happen. And we have to resolve those problems that we have to go on. Get, get the work done. And then finally, once it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, of course, while it's happening, you're also monitoring, making sure that hey, we are staying within budget. You know, that the, that the time, the, each item we said we are spending, we are staying within that. If we are going over, then, you know, it has to be a valid reason. So we are monitoring while the project is going on. Then we, when we close, we do an estimation, and we review. And we assess, we compare the estimation versus the actual. How did it go? What are the lessons we can learn? And sometimes we try to write these down you know, so that the next time we don't repeat the same mistakes. Or the next time we can do better. So we look back, okay, we had a youth camp. Fine. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Write it down, put it in a document. So that next time you can go back and read that document and make sure you don't make the same mistakes or you cover those points when you are planning. So I'll execute. Now, uh, there, there are different project management methodologies. That means how you run the project. There are different things. Uh, and these are just, again, they are industry and more from the, the tech industry. Uh, there is a linear, linear approach where you do an analysis. You, do the design, you go and execute it, and then you assess or you support the product. It's a linear way of doing it, which is what typically uh, people would do. But then there are also other ways, especially when it comes to doing things suddenly, you know, you're doing very quickly, an unexpected thing you have to do. 
for instance, uh, I remember when we when COVID happened, and then unexpected. I mean, nobody. This was not something you can plan for. It just happened. So, for example, we had to close the Bible College in the middle of the semester in March or something. We had to close. We tell everybody, please go home. You know, we cannot. Then very quickly, we had to think what to do. So uh, we, we went on online classes. So those things, you know, we would say was very agile project management. That is, we were making decisions as things were happening. Uh, because we, we didn't know what will happen next month, two months from now. Uh, then in, that was in 2020, in 2021, uh, again, there was another project or the ministry where, where we said, okay, we will support other churches and ministries. So in January 2021, uh, when it seemed like we could restart, uh, we said, okay, we're going to help other churches in our city restart. So we offered, um, I forget the amount of money, but whatever it was, I forget how much money. Anyway, some amount of money. We said, okay, we, we want to give this money to churches in our city to help them all restart. You know? So that was, again, it wasn't like we planned it ahead of time. No, it was something we just decided then. That, that, okay. Uh, we have a chance to restart, let us restart. But not only us, let us help others. Just plan like that. So, uh, uh, I don't know how many, what, 17 churches, what I forget the numbers. Generally, at 31. But anyway, we helped the other churches start. Then, but again, there was a second wave of pandemic. So, again, everybody shut down. This was uh, by, I think, by May or June. Again, and everything. things became very bad at that time. So, we restarted again, shut down. And things were very bad. But then we said, okay, what do we do? And then uh, many people needed help. A lot of people were suffering. So again, this was not pre-planned, but we said, okay, let us help churches all across the country. So in January, we only helped churches in our own city. But that was, you know, we had to shut down again. Things were very bad. Then we said, okay, let us help churches. Let us help churches and hospitals across the country. So again, that was a project. We couldn't plan ahead because we didn't know what was going to happen. It was happening. Everything was happening like on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we started that, it was actually quite funny because we had kept only a small amount of money. Uh, I think it was like 50 lakhs or something. We said, with this amount, we'll help people. <laughs> And uh, then we received, I think, more than 10,000 requests from all, all across the country. It's huge, like even we were not expecting. And so immediately, it's okay, how are we going to have so many people, so many pastors, so many churches? And, uh, and plus, uh, we had to check everything, you know, that the money is going to the right people. It should not go to the wrong all these things. So immediately we put together a team of 25 people who would call and check every request. So these things were not planned. It was happening day to day. Okay. We need, we need, to, we need people who could speak, I think, uh, 10 different languages in India, covering India. So we had to find those kind of people, always talk to them in their language, verify the details, make sure it was covered. How much would they actually need? All those things have to be explained. So everything was happening day to day. And then we have to send money. So uh, God helped us do it. But that kind of approach would be, you know, what we are looking at as uh, an agile project. It is happening day to day. We can't plan the whole thing from the beginning. We have an idea. Ideas help people. How to help? All those things day to day was planned, and then uh, we, we, you know, it went on for about four months or four months. 
that was during 2021. That was, so that was more of an agile approach of doing this. So typically, uh, under normal conditions, like when you can project and see clearly, you know, you would have an objective, a cost and time and resources. Uh, you would have some sense of, okay, this is how much we're going to spend. This is the time it's going to take. But in some situations, that may not be possible. Let like me mention here, here what we did here before. The, this happened at a very day to day. But generally, we would try to project everything. And we'd have a roadmap, which is this is how we're going to carry this out, very clear plan. Then you would break it down into smaller projects. You would say, okay, we do this, we do this, break it down. You'll also put a timeline together, which we call as scheduling for the uh, uh, Gantt chart, is what it's technically referred to. Um, and then you also need to collaborate or work together, you know, how people are going to work together. So you need to establish, uh, uh, especially if the project is bigger, more people. They need to clearly define how people are going to work together to get that work done. You can use tools for planning and scheduling. You'll also have reporting. Like you said people would report back and say, this is how things are going, how things are happening. Um, a time sheet, people would prepare their time sheet and say, this is where they're spending their time. Mm -hmm. The cost of resources and materials must be taken. You also want to capture ideas. So people have good ideas. How do they share those ideas? You need to have a way for it. So, so these are things to think about when you're when you're running a project. You know, uh, having a roadmap, breaking it down into clear tasks, um, having a timeline, ensuring there is collaboration, communication among the people, having a plan and a schedule having something to a reporting process, a way to capture how much time is being spent, uh, what is the resources and materials that are being used, and the cost for it, uh, a way to capture ideas. So, so these are things that generally go into running a project, and we need to think about these things. Okay? And uh, tools that we can use, of course, uh, we, can, you know, we, use, we can use Excel sheets, spreadsheets, and then there are more sophisticated, you know, project management software. We we use Open Project for our IT team, uh, but uh, generally we can use spreadsheets. It should should be managed. Uh, I've given some example projects. I just want you know some things that you can think about. These are things we had our pastors and team think about and make presentations, uh, but. Uh, this exact this ways to think of think more than you can use this if you want. Any questions on uh, project management? Uh, let me see. If there are any questions here? Uh, we're not getting into you know heavy duty, but uh, just we should have enough um, for people to uh, you know to run projects properly. Is the audio okay now? I just saw your message Paul. Is the audio okay? Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so is there any uh, instance where you planned? We can turn off the phone. Okay. Go ahead, Jeffrey, uh, make your question. Yeah. yeah, so I just want to know is there any instance where you planned and, and it didn't work out? And then, uh, how any instances like that happened? Or if we plan and didn't just work out for some reasons, how do we plan ahead? How do we come out of? Uh, mm. For me personally, I get into a guilt if I plan and it, mm. <laughs> it gives a feeling of guilt. Oh, it's, it can go like that. So we just want to know how do we handle mm. all these things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as a church, uh, we did plan certain things and they didn't happen. But then we have to um, take corrective action. So example, I'll tell you. So in 2018, we released our first music album. 
2018. So that was something we had always wanted to do for a long time, and it's encouraging our team to do it, do it, do it. Finally, 2018, everything came together, and that year we released uh, six songs, our first album. It was very good, except then uh, I told our worship team, okay, since we have done it once, let's do it every year. Let's keep it going. You know, we have the momentum. Our people have learned how to write songs, how to put the music together, how to produce the album. Let's keep it going. So the goal was 2019 produce an album like every year. And keep writing, encourage the people, keep writing songs, keep the momentum going. But the sad part is for four years after that, every year we planned, but we never produced. So 2019, uh, I think not even one song was hit. Uh, whole year came and went. I think one, I'm not sure. One, I can't, I, again, I don't remember all the details. But I think in four years, we only produced four songs. Four years. That means one song a year. So, so then, uh, but every year it was in our plan. Every year I would tell the worship team, you got to do this. And we all said yes, 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 but it never happened. So it was really this. But then, as a leader, I had to take action. Hey, I said, see, this is, we have all the resources, we have everything, but, uh, and we have, we have people with the skills, we have people with the time, we don't lack anything, but the output is not coming. So we need to do something, right? Are we planning? Yeah. Do we have the intention? Yeah, but no output. <laughs> Four years. Then, uh, in, uh, which year was this? 2022. Uh, so 2023, sorry, this year, 2023, we made some changes. Basically, uh, we reassigned the responsibility uh, and we made some changes. And this year, we did it. And, the team wrote 13 songs. So it's the same team. They were there for you know five, four years, nothing happened. We made some changes. This year, within the first, I think first three months, the team wrote 13 songs. And then we have already pr produced four songs, and then they're going to record two more. That means we're on target. You know, we are releasing uh, or six or seven of those songs were selected out of the 13 to be produced. So we did it. So did we fail in our plans last four years in that area? Yeah, we failed. But then we had to make some changes. We did it. And then the results came. So, so I think uh, same thing in the ministry, in any area of ministry, right? you, 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 we have to look at it very objectively. Say, hey, uh, if we are not preparing for it, uh, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. There's some reason, right? there's something wrong. We have to correct it. We have to make the change. We have to address, find out and address the problem. Then we can see. Yeah. So just one example in response to your question. <clears throat> Go ahead. Well, like in the songs, you'll be mentioning the songs and all those things. That you know, just the songs in my mind, I have this that area, Yeah, so the question, yes, yes, so the question, uh, here is uh, about this music and writing songs. If um, people are writing songs to be mentioned their names, and if their songs are not accepted, will they feel bad? Yeah. <laughs> so what we did when we decided to start this you know, APC Music project that was in 20, uh, we did the work in 2018 at that time, we wrote a document of how we are going to do this. And we shared it with all the worship team members saying, look, we as a team are going to write the songs. 
uh, we will give credit to the credit is due. Like if two people work on the song, we give credit. Or somebody wrote the music, they give. But it's a team. And everything will be owned by the church. Okay? So it's a team of whoever God inspires and writes, of course, we'll mention their names, who are playing the instrument, who are you know, producing the music as a team. Their names will be mentioned. Uh, the, of course, not only the music, but there is the video editing and all those things. The names will be mentioned. They will give credit to the credit is due. But the final products are owned by the church, and we are doing it as a team. So even the songwriting, actually, uh, I would say almost all the songs are done by teams. That means two or three people are sitting together and working on it. You know? And whoever did it, their names will be it. So even these 13 songs. So this year, see, what happened this year was very brilliant. Because when we reassigned leadership, uh, and what happened was, the entire worship team was broken into smaller groups, like teams of, I think, four or five people. And they were all, uh, they all would have to work on their songs, write songs, then submit it collectively. Then we value it, we sing it in church, see how it is, you know, how if everything goes through, then out of that, a few songs will be selected for production. So the big team, was broken into smaller teams. The smaller teams are working on songs together. They write and they submit. And then there's a collective group of people working at the, like reviewing the songs and music and all that stuff. So it's a combined effort. But wherever credit is due, people like names are mentioned, uh, everything's owned by the church. So we made it clear in the very beginning, then start. So then there's no confusion. Everybody is fine. Okay, so we will now move to another part of uh, church administration, which I'll just maybe kind of more introduce it now. Uh, and we have a full course on this next semester where we'll get into more detail. Lesson number 14, where in church and ministry administration, uh, it is important for us to make use of technology. So in the ministry, uh, we have technology is an asset. It is useful for us. And we should make use of it to whatever extent we can, to whatever we have access to, make use of it. Okay? For example, right now, we are using technology. We are sitting here. But we also have students who are online. Plus, uh, this thing is being recorded. This lecture is being recorded. You'll go on an e-learning portal. And through the e-learning portal, some more people may listen to this. So we are using technology to do the ministry. And so we have to think of different ways in which we can use technology. And uh, so also in administration, in coordination, we are actually using uh, a lot of technology. And I'll get into the details. Uh, next semester, I will just show you maybe one or two things now. Oh, I'm going to share my screen, but uh, you, so you will see this on. Yes. Uh, on. So we Let me start. Okay. So, let me open a new tab. I'm going to share my screen. I'll just show you one or two things. We will get into you know a lot more next semester when we have to do the full course on uh, technology, media and technology ministry. But, for example, one of the things that we use is a uh, church management software. You can see it now, yeah. Um, it's a church management software. It's actually an open source product. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's an open, free source, or free product. Uh, so we have been using it now for some time. Uh, so if I log in, 
what happens is basically this is where all other people's details are kept. So as soon as I log in, I can see that these are the people who have birthdays today. Right? So uh, of course we do have people, uh, our member care team, they will log in and they will send birthday messages to all of these people. Uh, so I also can you know, send messages to them, happy birthday, then just a WhatsApp message. So this is useful. We'll also see people who have their anniversaries coming up. They have seen the anniversaries and things coming up here. So I can send a message to them as well. And if I want to, I can also search for people by name here. You know, I can, uh, uh, I want somebody's details. So I'll just search for myself. So I can see, you know, all these people have the name Ashish. So I can just pull up myself and then see, okay, so I can look at my, you know, that person's details, right? I can see, you know, whatever, uh, wife, son, daughter, their address, email ID, phone number, et cetera. And, uh, and we can also keep a lot of notes here. You know, like as we interact with them, so on and so forth. Lots of other stuff here. Yeah, I'm not showing everything. But generally, this is a church management system where we all have a, every first time visitor, every person who visits us, or when people visit, uh, enter online, it all goes straight here into the system. And we can pull it up. And then we maintain this status. Are they members? Are they visitors? Uh, which location, central, south, north, there? Um, and then other tags that we put. Uh, so at any time, if we want to pull out, you know, uh, we want to send an email to all the fathers or all the men, you know, we can pull out the men, send them a message, like in those kinds of things we can do uh, with this data here. Right? So we use um, this church management system, which has all our data. We also use the same system to manage data of people who are not part of a church, but they're throughout India. Um, uh, like other pastors, so, so that's another one. We call it India Care, and in that, you know, we have people by different languages. Their details are there. So I think we may have uh, I don't know, 10, 15,000 people in that database. Generally, it's many pastors and leaders around the country. So when we want to send them a message, we will use that. Data. And then similarly, we have something for our Bible college. So same system, but that's modified for Bible college, where all our Bible college student data goes in. And we're actually modifying that to also include Marshi, et cetera, et cetera, things that needed for Bible college. So the same system is being used for three different things. One is for our local church. Another one is for all the other contacts who are not part of the church, but generally around the country and also for Bible college. So we can pull up their data anytime you want. We can go pull it up and see uh, see the data, etc., and then add notes and so on and so forth. So this is a very useful uh, thing to have. Um, let me just log out here. And um, basically, we are using a free product called Rock. RMS, Rock Relationship Management System. So this is the product that we use. It's a free tool. So anybody can download it and set it up for themselves online, uh, Rock RMS. And, uh, and we'll, I'll share this again next semester when we talk about media and technology. But this is the tool that we are using. Uh, you can use the free version, or they also have the paid version, which they can post it. So here's one. There's another tool that I've just mentioned now, which we are using, which is for our managing our staff and our consultants. Right? So this is the HR and human resource management. And again, we're using a open source product for this. It's called Orange HRM. It's a free open source product. And then of course, once you download it, you can customize it. So um, when you log in, uh, so this is what we use for all our staff. Um, uh, uh, and this is an, uh, ad, so I have administrative access. So 
if a staff or a consultant log in, they won't see all of these things. They'll see only a few of these. But because I, I've logged in as an administrator, I can see a lot of things. But this is where people apply for leave. So when I come here, I can see that, you know, passive versions on leave, Selena is on a half day, or, and so So we see, we can see who's on leave, et cetera. Um, and uh, uh, this is where people will apply for leave. So, you know, they go and they will make their leave applications here. Uh, this is where people would report their time. Uh, so uh, I can see everybody's timesheet. I can see, you know, my own timesheet. I haven't entered. I have to finish this. But every week, by the end of the week, we have to enter our timesheets, submit uh, our, you know, so every week we have to submit uh, how much time we have put in. And, uh, so submit your timesheets here. So everybody, all our staff and our consultants, um, um, so manage the timesheet. We also, uh, uh, some of our recruitment also comes in here. That means uh, when people apply, their, you know, their, uh, their applications are entered in here. So right now we're not processing this, but our HR will handle it. So we can actually process applications here. Uh, we can also do performance reviews here. We, right now we're doing performance reviews outside of this, but it has the facility to do it. It also has its own directory here where we can see people and their details. These are for staff and consultants, their details. Okay. So um, this is another product that, uh, an open source free product that I would uh, encourage. You know, it's, it's good for any church to use where you manage your stuff. You know, manage your staff, your consultants, your people are working, they report time, they may leave applications, everything's here. So all everybody logs in, they can see, they can see what's happening. So, so these are two um, two of these products that we are using. I'll just mention maybe one more, and uh, then uh, other things I'll share with you uh, later on. Let's see now. So another uh, software, another tool that we use is called PHP List. So this is something where we manage our email lists. And it is through here we send our emailers. Like when we want to send emails out to people, um, awesome. we send it through this software called Facebook. So for example, okay, the last email that was sent was about this weekly mentoring hour. Uh, and sent to PC about 1653. Emails were sent. Wait, this is seventh um, of November. That's two days ago. And this one, nobody. Okay, so see, like nobody actually looked at it. So one thousand six, but nobody looked at it. Six hundred, nobody. Only five looked at it. So, so this is a Sunday email. Uh, about 13,000 were sent, only four people. So we can see you know, who, how many people are actually looking at it, what's happening. Here's another 137,000. So, but anyway, we sent our emailers through this, and we can see how many were viewed, how many didn't, you know, what, what's going on. So, so we maintain our subscribers here. That means all our different lists. Are managed here, so we have lists for uh, different uh, kinds. Um, I think our biggest would be Sunday service. Weekly service. So this weekly sermon goes out to about 13,000 people. And then we have uh, by country or city sometimes. 
we try to record this email right now. Actually, not, not they don't have too much here, but generally we try to uh, record these here. Um, and also we have lists by language. Um, it's a Bible college. Yeah. By our location. So we can, if you want to target any location, you can send it out. The people have given us their email IDs. So, so generally we'll pull, pull out these email IDs from our church management system and, uh, and then target them. So this one is by different cities in India. But um, so this this is again a useful um, useful software to use when you are sending emails to out to bulk emails. So um, uh, so I just mentioned these three: the church management system, the HR management system, which is Orange HR, and the email list, which is PHP list. All these are open source products. They are free, which you can host it yourself and then use it yourself. So it's good for us as a for uh, as a church or a ministry to think about using you know different tools, different software for your ministry, um, so that you can uh, make things efficient, work well, serve so people well. Okay. Uh, next semester, like I mentioned, we will do a full course on media and technology. We'll get into a lot of other things that we can uh, use. And I'll, I'll give you the links and the resources for those things that we can use. Um, yeah, Uh, any questions? I mean, I, I know I didn't go into too much detail on leveraging technology, but any questions on that? Okay. So, just last two things that uh, we would share, and I think we'll be done, uh, is um, that uh, in ministry, we must have a culture where we pursue excellence and innovation. Excellence means whatever we do, let's try to do it well, the best we can. Innovation means let's try to do things creatively in a fresh way, new way, maybe experiment with some new ideas, maybe try out new way of doing things. So we should, in the ministry, in the way we are doing the ministry, we should pursue excellence and also innovate. Try to do something different. Especially because the world around is constantly changing. That means how we reach people should be relevant to where they are. We should be able to serve them in the ways that they need. So we should innovate. We should think of new ways. In nowadays, people, a lot, almost everybody has a mobile phone. So why not think of ways by which we can serve them through this device? But yes, I mean, the word of God, the spiritual things, but why don't we think of ways by which we can reach them where they are? They're spending so much time on that mobile device. So there's nothing wrong in looking at that and looking at ways to do it. So we should pursue excellence, pursue innovation, look at new things, pray. God will give us ideas. And then, of course, we have to execute those ideas. We have to make those ideas happen. Otherwise, they'll just be things we talk about. Yeah? So that's where good administration, good management is important. And uh, the last last thing I want to mention, point number 16, is that in any church organization, we should think about developing other leaders because that is the only way we can ensure continuity. Right? Um, the leaders who are there right now, they will not be there forever. 
they will have to hand it off to the next set of leaders, the next generation, younger leaders, and that will have to continue if the ministry of the church is going to continue. Okay. So it is a necessary thing that we develop younger leaders. We can't avoid this, it's not something, it's not an option. You have to develop younger leaders. You have to raise them. You have to empower them and then hand it off to them at the right time. Now, of course, that means succession planning, that you find out the right person uh, and then do that. So this has to happen in every area of ministry and also for the organization as a whole. This, this whole thought of continuing the work raising the next lead, leader and the leaders, passing it on. That must be in our minds. And we should work on it you know, as time progresses, as leaders come, we nurture them, and then intentionally work on past. So that should also be a part of our ministry administration, that we should start thinking about those things, work on those things. Okay. So with this, we are done with the course. Um, any questions? Let me also look at it online. Any questions for, from those who are with us online? On any of um, these? Just go ahead, John. Uh, was it just the last point we were mentioning regarding uh, nurturing leaders. So sometimes uh, we, uh, we invest um, on people so much and they they we know that after a point of time they will also be moving from the city or um or, or they will they will also be you know getting married or you know moving to a different phase of their life so um in a long run how do we see uh, which person can be uh, part of this particular ministry uh, in in the long run Mm -hmm. So we, we, we do have people who are associated with us and very committed and we, we can nurture them. But at the same time, we also know that after a point mm -hmm. of time, they will be moving. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we identify for a long yeah. time? Yeah. So I think uh, at least um, the approach we have taken is just to be open-minded. That means uh, we cannot... Um, one is we don't want to hold on to people forever and ever. We can't do that. Right? And even people who may be very committed today, they're very committed, but something may change in their life that they may leave the city. They will go somewhere else. So that is always a possibility. So we have taken a very open-minded approach, meaning whoever has potential, let us develop let us invest in them. Ultimately, we are investing in the kingdom of God. So even if they leave and go somewhere else, they'll be a blessing. Whatever they have learned here, whatever experience they have gained here, if they go to some other part of the world and they serve in a church there, they'll be a blessing there. So we say, okay, let's keep it that way. That means let us invest in everyone who has potential and everyone who has a desire to grow, we'll invest in them, and we know that some will stay, some will go, which is perfectly fine, nothing wrong with that. Each one has to do, you know, as God leads them. Uh, that is something we will not dictate. From our side, we just invest in them equally, just give them. And uh, the choice, the decision to stay or leave is between them and God. We leave it. Because that's a fact of life, that means each one has to obey what God has called them. So that's kind of the approach we take. And then those who stay, we continue nurturing them, which means we can then give them more responsibility and leadership. But again, there, there is no guarantee they will stay for you know another 10 years. You don't know. But as they stay, we keep investing. And uh, even if they go, it's not a loss because... Uh, they will be a blessing to God's kingdom wherever they go. So I think we just take that approach because uh, we definitely cannot uh, control anyone's life. Yes, Pastor. Thank you.
Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So we'll close here for today. Next week, uh, what I will do is I will put out the assignments okay, for this course. So next week, you can use the two hours just to do the assignments, finish it off, uh, and you will get your, your final score. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, so overall, uh, I hope this course has uh, been helpful and opened your mind to just different things of how to manage the church and how to run the ministry. You can go through the notes and next week's assessment will basically go through the whole notes again. It's an open book exam, so just do from home, look at your notes and answer your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be like a, a full review. The questions will be a full review of uh, the whole course and you can look into it. And uh, yeah, so we'll be with that, we are done with this course next week. So 18th will be the last day uh, and we'll have one week free before the end of the semester. Okay, so let's close in prayer for today. Somebody could close in prayer and we will dismiss this. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for uh, this time. Thank you for uh, the, the learnings that we had throughout the scope of God. We want to praise you for uh, all the good things that we have learned. Father, we ask that you would continue to bless us uh, and also to use these knowledges that we have learned for the kingdom expansion, oh God, and continue to remind us, Holy Spirit. We pray, oh God, that um, we would be a good stewards of what you have given us, oh God, and help us to invest in your kingdom, to see your kingdom being established, oh God. We thank you for this time. Thank you for using pastor to uh, teach us your word and, and strategies, oh God. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, so next semester, I'll see you again. Uh, I know I'll be teaching the course on media and technology, and uh, I think we have Daniel and Revelation. So we will be doing that together. See you all. God bless.